What is up, Cedar Crest Middle School students? Hey, uh, if we haven't met yet, my name is Justin, and I am pumped to be joining you for a little bit today. Hey, whether you're, you're watching on a computer, on a phone, on a tablet, on a TV, I'm so glad that I get to be with you. I have a question for you. Who is your favorite superhero? Like, think about it for a minute. Who is it? For me, growing up, it was always The Flash. I'm, I'm not really sure why. I think it's probably because, as a kid, everybody wanted to be Batman or they wanted to be uh, Superman, and, and I just wanted to be a little bit different. So, so The Flash was my guy. Red jumpsuit, yellow lightning bolt. I mean, the dude could run fast. Maybe it was because he was fast and I wasn't. I should process that, that later. See, the thing that we love about superheroes is that superheroes would see the, the evil in the world and they would do something about it. They would step up, they would save the day, they would go and do what seemingly nobody else was willing or able to do. And what I want to begin our conversation with is looking at what does God say about the idea of justice and injustice? Because we're jumping into this, this series called Do Something, and, and I think that God is inviting us to do something. So, first, what does the word justice mean? Justice is defined as something that's fair, right, or equal. Now, on the opposite, injustice is defined as something that's unfair, unequal, or not right. Turn on the news, uh, turn on the internet, and, and we're quick to see that there is both justice and injustice all around us. And for some of us, uh, we see injustice in, in our town. For some of us, we see injustice in our school in our neighborhood. For some of us, we even see injustice in our own homes. But hey, you're a middle schooler. What can you do about injustice? What can you do about the things that superheroes come in and save the day about? I actually think that, that if, if we can discover what God is saying what God is inviting us to do, I think that we will see a change in our schools. I think that we'll see a change in our neighborhoods. I think we'll see a change in our towns. I think we'll even see a change in our own homes. See, we can't be a part of the solution if we don't see the problem. So how do we open our eyes to see injustice around us? Well, if you've ever taken time to, to look at your Bible, you see that God talks about things like injustice. In fact, in the book of, of Matthew, we read about a moment where, where Jesus actually um, unpacks the idea of injustice in a pretty interesting way. See, throughout Jesus' life, we would see him talk about love God, love others as you love yourself. And when we see that, we discover that, that what God cares about is God cares about uh, our relationship with him. He also cares about our relationship between each other. And Jesus talked one time about loving your neighbor as yourself. And, and the question becomes like, who is my neighbor? And so Jesus tells a parable. Now, a, a parable is um, it's a story that takes uh, heavenly concepts which you and I can't always understand, and it puts it in, in earthly understanding, puts it in, in earthly experiences. So Matthew 25, starting in verse 34, Jesus says this, Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. 
I was in prison and you came to visit me. And the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. What Jesus is saying here is that what we do for others, that something we're actually also doing for God. Jesus is inviting us to demonstrate justice even when we're faced with injustice. To put it simply, before we do something about justice, we have to see it. Before we can do something about something else, we have to start by seeing it. See, it can be really easy for for any one of us, middle school, high school, college, Young adults, uh, adult with no kids and married, adult with married and kids, for us to, to, to like kind of close our eyes to the injustice in the world around us. It can be really easy for us to be focused on what is right in front of us. And if it's not directly here, well, then uh, I'm not going to worry about it. But, but God is inviting us to actually look beyond what we can just see. He's inviting us to look beyond what we experience just in our little six-foot bubble uh, of this quarantine season. And I actually think that uh, the longer we're quarantined, the longer that we're um, social distancing, the more that we experience a distancing from other people. And when we distance ourselves from other people, we stop seeing the injustice that they might be experiencing. And so over the next few weeks, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about what it means uh, to actually notice the injustice that others are experiencing instead of just being focused uh, on what we experience. Uh, And so what I want to do, I want to suggest um, a couple of ways that we can actually help see injustice around us. The first one is, is to simply move close. You see, move close enough to see the injustice. When we're at a distance, we may not see it. But when we get close enough to somebody else, well, then we can see what they're going through. It might mean that you need to begin talking to people who who are different than you. It might mean that you need to go and and ask a trusted adult uh, some questions. Remember, a trusted adult is someone who who loves God, cares for you, and has demonstrated over time that they do what they say. It might mean uh, sitting with a a small group of of your peers and having a conversation. That's actually why we do uh, life groups here. That's why we, we talk about things and then we gather in groups and we answer questions, not to see who has the right answer, but to see how we can learn from one another. And it might be that Um, a great next step to simply move close is to take some solitude or alone time with God and say, hey God, can you reveal to me, can you show me where there are things around me that are unfair, unkind, or are not right? Second thing I would suggest is to be curious. See, we can learn from other people um, when we actually have conversations with them. We can get curious about their experiences and see how what they experience is different than what we experience. And now we can develop this thing called empathy. Empathy is putting ourselves in their shoes. A few years back, I had a, um, a friend. And, um, and he had gone through a similar experience to someone in my family. I didn't know how to relate to this. So I went to my friend and said, hey, I, I, I want to move close and then I want to get curious. And I asked questions. And the more questions I asked, the more I discovered how much I didn't actually know. Because you see, before we can do something about injustice, we have to see it. There's this incredible woman years ago. Her name is Maya Angelou. And she said this, 
Do the best you can until you know better. Then, when you know better, do better. As a middle school student, you might think, how, how do I go and move closer? How do I get curious? How do I step into injustice? It starts by doing what you know is best. I was at a, a soccer camp one time. Yeah, I was in sixth grade, and a friend of mine was in seventh grade. Um, there was a group of kids that were um, making fun of my friend. They actually surrounded him, and so he couldn't move. And they began to pick on him because uh, they didn't like his name. At one point, one of them said uh, that you are unworthy. He didn't actually say that. He said it in a much uh, more um, colorful way, a way that I would never uh, want to repeat. But I remember walking up into that circle, looking my friend dead in the eyes and saying to him, hey, you're, you're not any of the things that they say you are. In, in fact, you are a beloved child of God and you don't need to stay here. So we walked away. See, the, the first thing that I had to do in that moment with my friend was to see him, to see the injustice, to move close, and to get curious. My, my hope is that we, we open our eyes to the world around us and we begin to see what other people are experiencing, and, and then we don't sit back and say, well, that's their problem. Because if that's how God treated us, then he would never have sent his son. But for God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That's why Jesus left heaven and came to earth. That's why Jesus died on the cross. Because God wanted to do something about the mess that we were in. So, what can you do next? Well, I would say, hey, maybe um, look at your, your neighborhood. And begin to, to open your eyes uh, to, to what's going on around you. See something. Don't just put your head down and go. Look around and notice the world around you. And I promise if you do, you're going to see something different. And when you do, move close. Get curious. Till next time. Peace.